What's going on, everybody? It's Joe from Total Justice Gaming with a new bot talk. I uh, hope you guys have been really enjoying the Wars for Cybertron. We're going to take a look at another video that was in our most recent Wars for Cybertron, which ended up being Matt and I duking it out in finals of our first official Constructed League, which is My Blue Bugs Mark II, and that was uh, going against Matt's White Mirage deck. Uh, I don't have Matt's deck. I don't have anywhere near the amount of cards to build Matt's Mirage deck. But we are going to be taking a look at Blue Bugs Mark II. Uh, why is this Mark II? Because Blue Bugs Mark I ended up to pretty much be a Energex burp in the wind. And Blue Bugs Mark II is just a lot better, a lot more refined, and overall a lot more fun. So we will be hopping right into it. Pun intended. So, we are a four-wide deck. Uh, we are blue, straight blue, with a very small splash of both orange and black. This is not a very, this is not the usual blue-black pierce deck. I wanted to have a bit more fun with it, and it took me places. We are going to be running down the bots. We have Flame Ward, we have Barrage, we have Chop Shop from set 4, and we have Kickback from set 4. So we'll run them down one by one, moving these guys aside. Uh, we will go over Flame War pretty quick, as a lot of us know who she is. She is a Decepticon, is a motorcycle specialist, she's a 310 1. Uh, in her alt mode, when you flip to this mode, each of your characters has bold 1 until the end of turn. In bot mode, she is a 310 1 that is still a specialist and has each of your characters as tough 1, including herself. So, we'll move on from there. Uh, if I am going to say anything about her, uh, she helps out in the deck. Uh, she makes for big defensive flips. We all know that uh, combining her with kickback, uh, especially in his alt mode, uh, he already flips a whole bunch, and then she does out some flips a bit more. Raider Kickback, which was the MVP of that day. Uh, he very, very rarely left uh, his Grasshopper Cricket Locust mode. I still don't know which one Kickback is. I think he's a Grasshopper. Yeah, he's a Hopper. Uh, he is an Incepticon and a Specialist. He is a 4-1-0 with the ability of one this defends. Flip one more battle card for each of your Incepticons that was on your starting team. Uh, this deck makes full function of that. There are a total of three Incepticons, including himself, meaning I get to flip five defensive cards uh, each flip, uh, and six uh, counting... Uh, Flame War, if uh, when she's flipped, meaning he's really at this point anywhere between a six defense to possibly a ten defense. If there's no additional armors on him and it's just himself and Flame War, uh, the good thing is, is the other bugs can be killed and he still gets his massive flips as it only checks what you're starting the lineup was. In bot mode, he is a 419, he is still an Incepticon and a Specialist. Uh, when one of your Incepticons attacks and you flip at least a blue, do one damage to the Defender. Uh, I didn't really use him in this mode a whole bunch for the games, uh, especially not in Matt's game. No, I think I may have. But anyways, he does combo with Barrage a little bit. Um, how it works out is Barrage will swing, and then if I flip a blue... Actually, I don't know if that works or not, uh, on a damaged enemy. This character has bolt 2. No, it does, I think. We'll have to get rulings on this. Uh, if I did it, uh, then I either was correct or I cheated out my opponent. Uh, we ruled it, we talked about it, and it was he gets his bolt 2 during the flips. <laughs> because you flip, then you check to see if there's a bolt to continue to flip. Uh, then you just keep going. So the way we were working it, even though I really didn't actually play him in uh, bot mode too much, was I would swing with Barrage, I would flip, I would ping a damage onto the character, and then Barrage's bolt 2 would proc during the flip. Uh, 
And then I would see, uh, proceed with uh, Bowl 2. That's how we were playing it. Guys, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know the ruling on this. But at this point, it seemed like a good natural combo. But most of the time, Barrage wasn't really a thing. And Kickback very rarely left his alt mode. His alt mode is very, very defensive. And for some reason, draws a lot of fire. Like, people take a point of pride of trying to KO... KO uh, Kickback during the local tournament. I don't quite understand why when they had other viable targets, but they just wanted to swing into kickback relentlessly. And I have ways of making that happen on purpose, but for some reason, everybody wanted to try and take kickback out, even if there were other viable targets. It's beyond me. Next up, we got Chop Shop. Uh, Chop Shop is a 4.11.1. Uh, with when you flip to this mode, you may scrap an or a green icon from your hand. If you do repair one damage from each of your characters, if the scrap card has no other icons, meaning a single green, repair one more damage from each of your characters. So repair one. Then if it's a sink pitch of green, if it's a solo green, heal for one more. So really heal two. In bot mode, he is a five eleven one. He's in Setacon and Melee, and when this swings and you flip a green, repair one damage from Chop Shop. He was our bulk healer, he's our white mage, our cler battle cleric in this deck. Um, really not too much to be said about him, he just swings for decent numbers along with Barrage. He can heal himself, he is the one you'll be flipping the most in the deck. Uh, everybody else either doesn't flip or only flips once and settles into that mode. And Chop Shop is really there for the continuous flips every turn once you get everybody settled to what you want. Then we got Barrage. Uh, Barrage in Setcon Melee. He's a 3-11-2. He is, has the ability of when you flip to this mode, one of your characters gets pierced two until the end of turn. And then in bot mode, he is a 5111 that says when this is attacking a damaged enemy, this has bolt 2. There's a lot of stuff we can trigger here. Um, sturdy Javelin on him is very fun because he's a melee, or we can swing with somebody with Sturdy, with, uh, bleh, with sturdy Javelin and... We can shoot somebody, I believe. We cannot shoot anybody with Sturdy Javelin. This is just a plus two. Oh, no, we can't. He's ranged from uh, bot mode. That's my fault. So, with a Sturdy Javelin on Barrage, we can actually trigger his ability right off the bat. When we swing, uh, one that's on a uh, range character and attack, scrap a card and deal two damage. So we just put on Barrage, swing Barrage with Sturdy Javelin. He tosses the Javelin at somebody. Uh, it pings him for two, and then they are considered damaged, so he gets his bolt two. Then we talked about the possible combo with Kickback. So, he has a lot of utility, he gets his big numbers, he has the ability to give somebody Pierce uh, for the turn if we flip him into alt mode. Uh, the alt mode has a bit of a bigger butt, which helped me survive in some games. Uh, but he is our primary damage dealer. Uh, everybody else is kind of a harasser, save for Chop Chop. But Barrage is really there just to bring the big beats. So, looking at everybody combined, uh, the other reason why I really like this build over my previous Blue Bug build is this is a 41 health 4 wide deck. Uh, that is nothing to sneeze at. If you watch the end of the War for Cybertron video between this and White Mirage, we did go to time and then we had to look at each other's health. And I said, I actually suggested, Matt, why don't we draw? Because if we go to health, I automatically win. And I do not feel comfortable being the uh, local organizer for the group and winning the first constructed tournament. To me, that leaves a very bad taste in my mouth. And I didn't want to win my first uh, constructed tournament, the first constructed tournament my group had. So I offered to just draw with Matt. Thankfully, he took it. Um, but 41 health on a 4 white team is very, very good. Uh, this particular combination I found is really, really fun, very, very effective. 
All right, let's hop into battle cards. Run down the weapons. We are running two copies of Sturdy Javelin. Let's see if I can make this a little bit more clear for you guys to read. Zoom in a little more, too. There we go. So we got Sturdy Javelin. It's a white pip. It says, while this is on a melee character, he has plus two attack. And while this is on a ranged character and it attacks, scrap this card and do two damage to an enemy. So, like I said, this is mostly going to be sticking on Barrage. Um, we can stick it on Chop Shop for make him seven health. Uh, I really just do like the combo with Barrage of giving, uh, pinging somebody for two on whoever he's attacking, then letting Barrage instantly get his bold two in. Uh, we're only running two of it because it has such limited target viability in the deck. We can really only stick this on, uh, Barrage and Chop Shop. And if Chop Shop gets it, it stays on him. Uh, with Barrage, you can put, make him a five, uh, five eleven two in bug mode. Or you can make him a, I guess, a pseudo-7. Because he's already dealing 2 damage for somebody, then swinging him for 5 with bold 2. But we're only running 2 of these. We are running 2 copies of Scoundrel's Blaster. Uh, it's a green pit, so it helps out. Chop Shop. Uh, we have nothing but Decepticons. It gives us a plus two attack, and uh, if the upgraded character is attacking Autobot, he has Pierce too. We have some minor Pierce in this deck, but not a whole lot. I actually want to make this a defensive deck where we just whittle the opponent down. But a little bit of Pierce never hurts. We're, of course, running three copies of Handheld Blaster because double blue pip. And because we are nothing but a group of Decepticons that are between five and seven stars. We are running three copies of Laser Cutlass. Uh, Laser Cutlass is our plus one that gives us Pierce three. So this gives anybody a decent chance of hitting at least uh, two thirds to almost their, uh, two thirds to half of their damage value right off the swing. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, everybody can hit close to their cap damage cap. With it, um, it's just also a good card in uh, four wide uh, low star count deck. So it was an automatic include at a three. Armors, we are running three copies of extra padding because of the green pip and also the stacking tough. This gets very, very frustrating when we put this on kickback. Uh, that would mean kickback gets... Let me do the math, because that was an actual picture I took. Uh, kickback, when he defends, so he'll flip two for the natural flips. He'll flip three more uh, for having three Insecticons on the field. He'll flip... Let's say we have two uh, extra paddings and a... Flame War, so he'll flip another three, so we're up to eight, and then we would probably, at that point, having gone through, go through eight cards, that's one-sixth of the deck, um, we will uh, probably hit a white, which means two more, so we're flipping eight good uh, ten cards. Uh, just off of one single defense. So we go through a fourth of our deck off one swing with two natural flips, three bug flips, and three tough flips. So this is very, very important in this deck. And again, this makes kickback a target uh, on people's list. They just want him gone. I think at that point it's a point of pride. Saying, oh god, I KO kickback because he takes forever to kill. Uh, we are running three copies of Terrifying Resilience. It is a orange-black. Cannot be put on Autobots. Not a problem in this deck, and it automatically gets in tough two. If we run into this uh, over extra padding, we, of course, slap this on anybody that we want to give tough. Because with Flame War, that means this is really tough three. 
Uh, I just explained through extra padding how good three tough on kickback can be. But anybody else needs it because we are pretty low armor in this deck, be it bot or bug mode or bike mode um, with flame war. So any extra tough is greatly appreciated to help us get through some very, very orange heavy decks. As we're running two specialists in this deck, I decide just put in two sturdy armors. Uh, you can only put it on specialists. It gives plus one uh, defense, and then if they're against a ranged, uh, an additional plus one. There are a lot of ranged Autobots, Decepticons, and Mercenaries running around the field right now, so uh, I saw this as a good thing. We can slip, uh, put this on kickback. We can put this on flame war. Uh, I just thought it was a decent pull because, like I said, there's a lot of range running around right now. So, plus two is always kind of good. Uh, moving into our utilities, we are going to be running two field communicators. When you put this on a specialist, scrap the top card of your deck, you may play that card. Uh, we can put this on kickback or flame war for plus one attack. Uh, meaning kickback can attack for a 5, flame war can attack for a 4, which is not too bad. Honestly, I would be putting the uh, laser cutlass on flame war, and then probably the field communicator on... Well, I can put them on both, because one's a, one's a weapon, one's a utility. Point is, we get a free card to play... Uh, uh, from whatever we scrap, uh, we have a very large amount of playable cards in the deck, so there's not really a dead card, except for maybe a uh, handheld blaster, but even then that has its purpose. <coughs> Pardon me. So, we're doing that. Uh, we are running two copies of Point Position. Uh, the upgraded character has Brave while tapped. We are, of course, just going to be putting this on kickback and forcing people into him, as opposed to people just picking him to attack anyways. Uh, that's really the only reason it's here. It is a blue-black. Uh, we're only running two of because we only really have one intended target. And we go through the deck quick enough, and I have enough draw in here that I feel... Um, it's worth only putting two in. On to battle cards. We are running three copies of Sabotage Armaments. Uh, secret action. When one of your characters defends, scrap all the attacker's weapons. Um, Vaporize is in the sideboard. I'll go ahead and spoil that now. Um, the reason I'm running this over Vaporize is because in my local metal meta, we have stuff like Astro Trash. Uh, we have a couple six-shot decks. Uh, we have a couple uh, crew club decks, so in my local meta, this is the better choice because this scraps all the weapons they got. I have to deal with. Uh, Mirage uh, could have ran a shoulder holster or dual wield, and then I would have had to deal with both Traxanon and a weapon. Um, that scrapped all the weapons on there. It was just consistent. Uh, it is easily telegraphed, so you got to know when to play it. Um, the sideboard for this is Vaporize. Uh, Vaporize lets us get rid of a weapon and armor, or a weapon or an armor or a utility, and that would probably be better in a lot of other decks versus this. Uh, just depending on what your meta is like, but my meta is multi-weapon heavy, so this for me was the better choice. We're running two copies of Rapid Conversion. Uh, this lets us flip one of your characters from uh, one mode to another. We really only play this just to get an extra flip out of Chop Shop if I've already flipped him and then transformed him into... Uh, or flip him from bot mode to bug mode, and then do its thing, I can play Rapid Conversion, put him back into bot mode, and then the following turn, just to get him back. We really only need two Rapid Conversions. I'm honestly thinking about putting this into Escape Routes, just for the two additional green pips, uh, so we can do more healing. Um, it's really only here to help Chop Shop flip quicker and more... Uh, 
just help them flip quicker. I mean, there's really no other reason for this card in this deck. I could put Weapon Enthusiast on here, or Equipment Enthusiast for more draw. Um, we are, I am still testing this deck, and I'll let you guys know if I do do that in the long run. But uh, being able to flip into bug mode one turn after another is very helpful in this deck. Because even though we are 41 health, we are still kind of spongy. I mean, we're at decent numbers, but still being able to consistently flip and heal up characters in a blue deck is just infuriating to the opponent. Uh, we're running two copies. Uh, the bigger they are. <clears throat> uh, this lets me give a plus two damage bonus if I'm swinging up, which we almost always are going to be. And Pierce four. This is no way for us just to get some decent Pierce and decent attacks. Uh, we can sideboard in stable cover if we want to for this. Um, that's our only other... Um, bleh. This is our only other choice. Uh, we do need to keep reprocessing the deck, and this is our only other two of. I'm only running two stable covers. The stable covers let me uh, just get a little bit more black in the deck um, and help prevent other Pierce decks from going overboard on these guys. But uh, we are swinging this in so we can swing upward into bots and... Uh, deal a good chunk of Pierce, letting us hit at almost our full damage values, depending on who we're hitting with. So, we're only running two. We're running three copies of Security Checkpoint. Um, it's a double blue pip. You know the deck is serious when you see this card in it. Uh, also, thank you Team OTKO for subscribing to the channel. Neat. <laughs> uh, just a message popped off on my phone saying I got a new subscriber. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, this is a double blue. Uh, as I said, my local meta is very equipment heavy and upgrade heavy uh, because we are running stuff like Astro Trash. We got Crew Club decks. We got Mirage decks. Uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, I had, took this out of my original blue bug deck, which had nine double blues. This only has six double blues. Um, we are really not too hurt by running this, because each player reveals their hands and scraps all upgrades from it. Uh, we go through the deck quickly enough to where the losing our hand kind of hurts, as we have 22 total upgrades in the deck and 18 actions. But most of the time, I've already played it out, or I only play this in emergency when... Uh, it depends on who I'm going up against. If I'm going up against, again, Astro Trash or Private Jetfire or uh, Galaxy Convoy, um, those are the times I definitely want to play this because I want to make sure that they cannot load out their character as fast as I load out mine. I'm fine because I can draw enemy fire away and I can just sit there and build up resources again while well, they need their resources a bit quicker. So we're running three copies of this because of the double woo and because this is kind of like the hit the big red bu button moment to slow down the opponent's momentum. We're running two copies of Reprocessed. This is Scrap and Upgrade from an from any character, repair two damage from that character. Um, we're running two of these. We could probably bump it up to three of these and bump a draw card down uh, if we need to. <sighs> Sorry, my phone's going off in the background. Um, reprocess. Like I said, so it's a single green, so we can chuck it uh, for Chop Shop. And... Um, Really, this is one of our only single double greens. Uh, so we need to get this in hand as much as possible. Um, I am looking to see what I can cut down in the deck. I could probably drop to two sabotage armaments and go up to three reprocess. Um, it just kind of depends on what the situation calls for. Uh, I'm still testing this out. This is probably the first sturdy build, which is why I played it at Locals. And I'm sharing it with you guys, so this will be changing but right now, it's fine the way it is. Uh, we're running three copies of War of Attrition. 
Uh, War of Attrition lets us, again, get a lot of blue-green to be able to pitch Chop Shop. Uh, choose one of your opponent's characters. Your opponent chooses one of their characters and deals one damage to it. Uh, if this is the third War of Attrition, do you have played this turn? Repair three damage from one of your characters. So this is, uh, lets us burn an opponent for three while potentially healing for three. Uh, War of Attrition, we can also kind of paint who we want, uh, Barrage to go in because whoever they choose is where I will, if applicable, uh, will send Barrage into and let him get his bolt two right off the bat. Uh, other than that, it's just a good heal card. It's a green to pit for, uh, pitch to Chop Shop for his heal. Uh, and being able to burn somebody for three while healing for three. Pretty good. Our other orange card and last card of the deck, we are running three copies of Swindled. Uh, Swindled lets us draw two, pitch two. And if you began the game with only Decepticons, you may play an upgrade. So, we get to draw two. We do have to pitch two in hand, but uh, we got plenty we can pitch. We can uh, get rid of those uh, handheld blasters. We can get rid of these security checkpoints if we don't need to play them at the moment. Uh, we can get some whites back in the scrap pile faster. Being able to play an upgrade for free is very, very good. Um, it just means I can load out armor quicker on everybody or weapons on everybody quicker. Uh, if we do need to sideboard, uh, we can sideboard in uh, Pep Talk and just give us a straight play it, draw two. Uh, it would also bump up our defense because we are currently running six oranges and 32 uh, blues. So we swap this out for Pep Talk. We are only running three oranges and uh, 35 blues in a 40 card deck. So that's over 75%, despite what uh, Fortress Maximus says about this. But yeah, that is the deck. Uh, we will run straight into sideboard uh, for Sturdy Javelin. If we want more Pierce, we can put into Piercing Blaster. It'll give us Pierce 3. We already talked about it, but we can put in three copies of Vaporize over our Sabotage Armaments if we are seeing a more armor or utility-based deck. Uh, I've already explained the reason why I'm running Sabotage Armaments over this, but it's a choice to scrap an enemy upgrade, which I love to death. Uh, Pet Talk, we just went over why. We can pitch this in over Swindle. We can boost our defenses and just have a straight draw two as a draw two pitch two. And stable cover, so we do not get overly harassed by opposing pierce decks. This will let me survive with plus one defense. They can't use pierce, which this does really pierce does really hurt the bug deck, but it does let us stave off that for a little bit. So, guys, that is Blue Bugs Mark II. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave comments if you have any. I'd love to chat with you guys. Uh, hit me up on Facebook. Uh, either at the Total Justice Gaming Facebook page or just message me directly. Uh, I'm chatting all the time with you guys. I love it. Uh, love the game. This game is really, really fun. I'm happy to be a part of the community. And we'll see you guys next time.